I'm a, I'm a fat boss. I'm a fat boss. I'm a, I'm a fat boss. I'm a fat Mr. Kyle, the monster, how's the Coronas treating you? Uh, I mean, so far so good over here. Um, I spent a little bit of time up in Huntsville, and there isn't really uh, much up in Huntsville. Uh, but now I'm back down here in Stony Creek. And uh, yeah, I mean. I love Huntsville. I have a couple of friends up in Huntsville. So yeah, yeah. Nice. Like, although nice. when I was, when I was uh, up there, um, running up there, I was afraid of getting eaten by bears. Yeah, yeah, I do a lot of like trail running and stuff up there, but I usually carry like a little pocket knife or something. And uh, I don't know if they do much. I don't think a pocket knife is going to save you from a bear. Yeah, maybe not. At least I could poke it a couple of times and I don't know, get mine in a little bit. You got to go for the eyes. Yeah. Okay, so you're in, in Stony Creek? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, That's yeah. So still happening. Uh, you staying active? Yep. Yeah, still running a lot. Um, you know, while I'm down here, I I stay in the gym, so I've got access to the punching bags and stuff like that. So, um, and then the UFC PI, they sent me some uh, like a workout routine to to keep me in shape too. So I'm still doing lots, keeping the weight under control, and uh, yeah, just waiting for all this to pass. It's so hard keeping the weight under control with the corona and then Easter eggs, chocolate everywhere. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, I mean, it's been pretty good so far. I don't really keep any food here. So uh, and then I've got my one sponsor. Uh, the cooler cooler bags have been making me all my meals, so it's all super healthy stuff. And yeah, I don't like. I, I'm not gonna go to. I don't go to Walmart or anything, so I don't really. I don't. Uh, you're ready to go yeah. once the Corona is done with. You're ready to go. Yeah. It sounds like you're keeping yourself healthy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, eating healthy and staying in shape and stuff, and then just you know reading lots and trying to keep the mind busy with uh, you know all the boredom. Yeah. So, what's your take on the whole fight island? Uh, I mean, it sounds like a good idea. I mean, you know, Dana's a smart guy, and he's got a lot of, uh, you know, people working with but it's him. not happening? Uh, it's, uh, from last I heard, sounds like he's still planning on moving forward with it. Really? I think I so. Disney, I thought Disney shut his ass the fuck down. So that was for April 18th. He was going to do a show in California, oh, at, okay. and it was going to be on, like, a native reservation. So it was going to be technically, it wouldn't be under an athletic commission. So that's kind of how he was getting through some of those um, loopholes. So it was going to be in California on Native American land so that the athletic commission and the governor, nobody could kind of touch him on that. But what ended up happening was the, the governor of California just kind of went over Dana and went straight to Disney and ESPN and kind of talked to them. So then they told Dana that they, they didn't really want it to happen. So, but uh, they they said they're doing a fight May 9th and they've announced the card, but they haven't really announced where it's going to be. So maybe that will be the, the fight island. Fight island. Yeah, apparently they're flying them in to some secret place. Yeah, and I mean, as, as I mean, I guess if it's an island, and well, if they're it's able, all pretty Illuminati. Yeah, yeah, it's it's interesting. But yeah, I mean, if they can test everybody as they bring them on the island, and only have tested people on the island, then you know there really shouldn't be any coronavirus worries. But I could see they want to kind of keep it under wraps because maybe yeah, but you would have to test. You would have to test everyone and constant testing because. I mean, there's people who have it and don't carry it and don't have the symptoms. Yeah, but I think as long as they tested everyone before they got on the island, like when they got off the boat or the plane or something, once they're tested once and there is no corona on the island, that should be safe, I think. Uh, I see how the elite have their own island, corona-free island. Yeah, yeah, it'd be nice to have your own island. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of crazy to think that, you know, actually, it's kind of, I kind of like the idea where, where uh, Dana White is just like, 
I'm I want to do my own fucking thing and you know I think mo more of us need to take that sort of risk of taking a chance and and not relying on you know the rules don't aren't always right yeah and i understand uh, where everyone's coming from with with the quarantine and stuff but again the, the quarantine i believe is more so to protect some of the older people and people that are at risk um you know that already have respiratory illnesses oh, yeah, completely but there are also when you're able to think outside of the box and still when you're a problem solver i like problem mm -hmm. solvers you know there are, things can still be done there are there's always a way around things most of the time yeah yeah and obviously with like dana white and the ufc they've faced uh you know a lot of problems and issues kind of since the beginning well, of the they've got a lot of money so they can fix it yeah yeah exactly with this whole quarantine thing um have you faced any kind of personal obstacles because, I mean, this is a time where we can kind of reflect on ourselves and all that. Yeah, yeah I mean, just for, for me, it's just spending, you know, a lot of time, you know, alone and, and stuck inside. Um, you know, especially with training, when you're in training camp and stuff and all you do is train every day, it's kind of similar to, to quarantine anyways, because all you do is eat, sleep and train. Yeah, so, that's how um, I am in the studio. Yeah. Um, I'm, I have trained myself for years to be quarant quarantined. Yeah, so the only thing with the fight camp is maybe on like a weekend I'd sneak out and, and go watch a movie or something or, you know, I'd try and find something to do or I'd go up to Huntsville and, you know, I'd go out on the four-wheeler or something or, you know, shoot some guns or do something to yeah. kind of relieve some stress. It seems but, like that's what you do in Huntsville. Is that the only thing you people do in Huntsville is shoot fucking guns? There's not a whole lot, a whole lot to do. We got a little yeah, movie. I want to shoot some guns. I want to shoot some guns. Yeah, a lot of things to do it. I just want to shoot things, just like shoot a tree or something. Shoot some yeah, cans. trees, pop cans, whatever. Smoke some, some, uh, some weed and drink some beer and shoot some cans. Yeah. It sounds like a nice Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of what we did growing up. So. Yeah. So you you grew up in Huntsville. Yep. Born and raised. And that's where you you got into fighting in school. Yep. Yeah. So I I started training when I was fourteen. So just getting into grade nine, and then um, yeah, once I started training, some of my friends trained, and then yeah, there was always. You know, we do some boxing at the high school or stuff like that. And yeah. Yeah. You have anything coming up in the fall? I guess that's when things are going to get ramped up again. It's it's hard to say. Like the UFC is saying they're going to do a card in May, May 9th. And um, before Corona hit, uh, we were talking to them about a fight. But then kind of once Corona hit, they got so busy, obviously, trying to schedule the shows that they had and trying to figure out this fight island and stuff. We haven't really talked to them since the, the outbreak, I guess. So once uh, the shows get rolling again, I'm sure we'll, we'll get in touch with them and, and try and get on the, the next available card. Yeah. But in the meantime, you have to keep, keep in shape, keep on your shit. Yeah, 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 and try and keep the weight down and stuff. And, you know, I think um, as long as if I'm in shape and my weight's good, I think it'll kind of keep me ahead of some of the others that are, you know, kind of taking the time off during quarantine and, and maybe getting a little heavy and not staying as great a shape. So hopefully as soon as this passes and the UFC is able to go, I'm able to kind of jump to the front of the line because I'm ready. Yeah, that's awesome. That must take a lot to constantly be ready and to maintain. Yeah, especially in a time like this. I mean, uh, even during like, the normal time, it's hard to always be training and, and always stay ready. And but at least then there's a possibility of a fight. Whereas right now, you know, I'm still training hard, you know, doing everything right. But there isn't even a possibility of a fight right now. You know, the, the, the soonest would be maybe June or July. So, um, Right now, the motivation 
is is hard to come up with but uh you know there's not really much else to do yeah, either. i was talking about this yesterday about motivation and it's it can be difficult to find it when it feels like the whole world has stopped yeah yeah and there's there isn't really anything to work for, work towards right now like we don't see, that is where you have to change your perspective there is something to work towards and that's a better you essentially yeah yeah it's maybe and not possible, some, and the possibility of the future right because if you you like you're doing the right thing where you're prepared the worst thing that you can possibly do to yourself is have an opportunity present itself and you not be prepared yeah yeah exactly but you prepare right yeah. you prepare yeah. your shit. yeah yeah i'm ready to go right now if it was uh, if, if it was possible so yeah i i really love watching fights i'm kind of it's one of my many obsessions yeah yeah I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't want to fight. I don't have a desire to fight, but yo, love watching it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. There's something really organic, I think, about fighting. Like I was never a huge sports fan. I always enjoyed playing sports, but I wasn't wasn't big on watching sports. Like I'd watch hockey, but the whole time I'm watching, I'm just hoping the fight breaks out. Yeah, I'm not a sports fan either. Not a big sports fan. So I'm gonna roll a spliff. Um, you have any weed you can smoke with me? I have actually never smoked weed. <gasps> you are a good boy? Yeah, I guess, I think so. Yeah. Oh. I think maybe when I'm done this career, maybe I'll- How have you I'll... not smoked weed when you live in Huntsville? Yeah, I know. You grew up in Huntsville and you don't smoke weed? That's all they do there. I mean, it's that's that's a pretty big hobby up that way. Weed and guns and beer. Weed, guns and beer, yeah. Country life. Yeah, I love country life. I had a little taste in South Africa. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. So I heard that you're funny. <laughs> when does when when does that kick in? When does I, it go? I heard you were funny. I'm a pretty, pretty shy guy, but I think once I get used comfortable, then maybe some humor comes out. But uh, yeah, it takes me it takes me a long time to get comfortable. Oh, um, I don't know. I got some pliers here. <laughs> now maybe even maybe if we're in person, maybe I'd I'd warm up a little quicker. But yeah, see that's the that's the problem. Technology is great because I can keep doing these podcasts mm -hmm. and connect and connect with people like you. But um, podcasts are so much better in person. You can connect, we can laugh in person. But yeah, you can really get a better chemistry. Okay, well, I'm hoping you'll warm up because I um, was expecting some funny jokes here. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know, I'll do my best. <laughs> I don't don't have any off the top of my head right now. Oh, I heard a great joke the other day, but I forgot it. <laughs> <laughs> it was really funny too. Fuck. Ah, such is life, right? That's what happens when you smoke too much weed. You forget. I guess. I wouldn't know. Yeah, so how are you and your family? Oh, uh, everything's good. I mean, they're they're man, right? Your family What's man? That? Your family man? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Your your family, you and your family is holding in. Your wife's not trying to kill you or anything. Well, they're all up in Huntsville. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's convenient. Yeah. Yeah, nothing, nothing too crazy. So usually I go up there on weekends and stuff, but um, yeah, with the whole Corona stuff, I've just been kind of staying down here. So with a lot of FaceTime and stuff to see my sons, but yeah. 
Oh, how many sons you got? Two. Yeah, how old are they? So I got a five-year-old and a three-month-old. Ooh. And your wife's all alone? Yep. Yeah, I was up there. Um, while your ass birth ass was awesome. tell you. What's that? I said she's hating your ass right now, let me tell you. Uh, I think so. She's doing okay. Though. Home with two kids. Ooh, yeah. in quarantine. Yeah. But my oldest son, Corbin, he's he's I'm like five now. When you see her, Mister, okay? You better fuck her real good. <laughs> I'll see what I can do. I mean it. <laughs> okay. Because a woman who a woman who is able to not only understand and accept a man leaving for long periods of time but to raise two children you know multiple orgasms she deserves all right i'll see what i can do good then i gotta try and make that million dollars in the ufc to send some of that back there oh that's just money that comes and goes orgasms are for life <laughs> all right okay So, what other shit are you into? Um, lately it's been not much. I mean, just just since I got in the UFC, it's been kind of tunnel vision on training and. But that's the way it should be, right? Because that's your goal. Yeah, yeah. So, like, but before that, you know, I would spend a little more time uh, in Huntsville, and you know, I'd go hunting or fishing and a lot of stuff like that. But. Uh, yeah, once I got in the UFC, it's been, um, you know, pretty much steady trying to train and get better, get better and get ready for fights and mm -hmm. not a whole lot so of time. How would you say that right now when you're, you're training? Because we're always trying to improve or at least look at, at our weaknesses and toughen them up a little bit. What, what parts are you working on right now? Uh, so always wrestling. Um, I started out as more of a, a kickboxing and jujitsu kind of guy. So um, wrestling wasn't kind of my first attribute so or first skill set, I guess. So that's always one I, I'm trying to add on. And then with stuff like jujitsu, I mean, jujitsu is kind of an endless thing. There's so many different styles and, and uh, moves you can learn. So that's always working on that and then just keeping my my kickboxing and muay thai sharp because you know if you if you kind of take you know a week or two off of that then you lose the timing and everything slows down and it's so amazing how quick we lose something if we don't keep it keep up at it we don't yeah. practice it man our mind quick to lose but if we keep, bring it back our mind and our body is also very quick to remember yeah 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 muscle memory is you know always there it's just yeah sometimes it takes a little bit to shake the rest off yeah i'll smoke this for the two of us all right that sounds good and so that's the old marijuana eh? right. the old marijuana old mary jane yeah her and i are besties Hey, have you have have you had, did you see any of my podcasts before you agreed to come on here? So I watched a little bit uh, with Dennis. Okay. okay. Yeah, that's a good one to get an example of. Mm hmm. Yeah, Dennis is Dennis, is an interesting guy. Yeah, he's a sweetheart. Yeah, yeah, super nice guy. So. Oh, nice! Such a nice guy. Really, yeah. really nice guy. Yeah. Yeah, I was telling I was telling Dennis the the other day that um, because we were talking about haters and and making it and you know you don't really make it you haven't really made it unless you got haters and I yeah. hadn't had any haters and I was telling him I was like I got my first hater yo I got my first hater I was so excited I had to share it with him yeah yeah I don't know it's kind of a bittersweet thing but yeah it's you know you've made it when you got haters, but then 
I don't know, then they hate on you. So it's like, but if you yeah, take it with a grain of salt. Don't care about that. Those aren't the people that are important in your life. Yeah. I mean, I find it, I find it hilarious. I love the haters. I find it fascinating what people choose to hate on. Yeah. Yeah, me coming from a small town, it's always interesting. I think because maybe some people get a little jealous or something because they're still living in the small town and they didn't really get to chase their dream. Yeah. You must have a lot of small town haters. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's. You know what? Honestly, they don't have anybody to hate but themselves. Yeah, I think they just project. Right? You work hard for where you are right now. Mm hmm yeah worked hard a lot of sacrifices um you know a lot of years of training and not making any money at all and you know and so it takes a special kind of it takes a very special type of person to persevere and not give a fuck about that shit yeah where the money money doesn't drive you it can't be the money that's driving you i mean no. it can. there are a lot of successful people where money drives them but I don't know, to be talented and maybe somewhat happy. Mm-hmm. When with this sport, yeah, they, like if, if money is your only motivation, then it's, it's not going to work out because there's so many yeah. injuries and setbacks. And then even if you do make it to something like the UFC, the money is still not usually life-changing money. So, I mean. Yeah, and I don't think people realize that. No, no. They, they think of a, a, I think a lot of people think of a fighter, a UFC fighter, and they think, oh, you know, you must be making all this big time money. But listen, if you can make enough to live comfortably and do your passion, that is success. Yeah. 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 I think once people hear professional athlete, especially if they see on TV or pay-per-view, they just assume you're making like that. NHL or that NFL money. Yeah, but, uh, but you got the cheddar. Yeah, yeah, but unfortunately we haven't made it that that far yet with the UFC. So, but uh, yeah, I mean, I'm living living the dream right now, and you know, as long as I can get a couple fights here and there, it's enough to get by, and and I'll do this as long as I can. Then when I'm forty, I'll figure something out, though. When you're forty, how old are you now? Uh, Twenty-eight. Oh, you're young. Holy shit, you're young. I guess I'm basically thirty, but yeah. You're basically thirty. Well, yeah. Once you're over twenty-five, you're thirty, right? And then once you're thirty, you're basically forty. No, don't say that to me. <laughs> yeah. okay. I'm a woman. <laughs> don't say that shit to me. <laughs> I don't want to hear that fuckery. Well, let's say. Uh, 40 is the new 20, right? Yo, so. I heard, yeah, I was just about to say that, okay? Listen, <laughs> I heard that the 40 is the new 30, okay? So now the 30 is the new 20, so fuck off. Okay, so I'm basically 20. Mm-hmm. Well, no, I guess by that, yeah, you're, you're still a teenager. Yeah. There we go, whole life ahead of me yet. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, I feel broken and old, but... <laughs> Yeah, you feel broke. I feel broken and old today, actually. But don't tell anybody I said that. Yeah, it's usually the morning. Once I get up and moving, shake off some of the old injuries and stuff, then I start feeling not too bad. Yeah, I find the best thing. So my morning routine is I get up and um, have a spliff and my coffee and, and yoga. Okay. Got to get the yoga in. Yoga in the morning, uh, yoga at night. I've tried a healthy, yoga. A healthy spine. I forget the say. I forget the saying, but if you have a healthy spine, you'll have a healthy life. Yeah, healthy spine. I can't think of anything that would rhyme with spine. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I've heard health, health, or happy wife, happy life. Yeah, well, obviously. No spine, though. No. Anyways, take care of your spine is what I'm saying, basically. All right. Give it, give it a shot. I'll try some oh, yoga. Actually, do you know what would be really good? Have you ever tried Iyengar yoga? I've only done like one or two yoga sessions or classes. 
and I don't know what they were. I okay, think. Iyengar yoga is with a lot of props. So you're using a lot of, you might even be using a chair or um, blocks and mats and shit. Yeah, it sounds a little bit easier because the stuff I did was, was difficult. Well, see, Iyengar yoga, I think Iyengar yoga is awesome for everyone and especially fighters because it's, it's all about balance and, and finding the, the, the symmetry within the left and the right and making them even. You should try it out. Yeah, yeah, I'm not very symmetrical at all, I don't think. So I fight, fight orthodox, so like my left foot forward, so everything is kind of twisted and I don't know. It might, help to twist, it might help to twist you back, but I don't know, that might fuck up your fighting. Who knows? I don't know, I think... But it helps with injuries. I know that after I do um, 75 minutes of Iyengar, I, my hip feels amazing. Yeah. Yeah, that's something I should probably maybe Google some YouTube videos while I've got all this extra time in quarantine. Yeah. Iyengar yoga. I'll send you a vid, uh, YouTube link thingy. Okay. Okay. Yes, I definitely can't spell that one. I don't know. Listen, my dyslexic ass can barely spell it. I spell it by visual memory. Uh, what do, What do you got planned for the rest of the day? Training? Uh yeah. So the U. So like I said, the UFC PI sends me like some body weight workout stuff. So I'll do that later on, and then try and get in uh, i already did an hour run this morning but maybe i'll try and do a bike or something so how later. far how far do you get when you run an hour so usually what i do is i, I try and do like 10k an hour roughly so i'm not going like super fast just more or less like for me it's like yeah, a, that's a, a nice that's a nice jog yeah yeah because i'm generally fairly big for for the 145 division so how tall are you uh, 5'11". 5'11". Okay, so I'm 5'2", and I, it takes me about an hour to run eight kilometers. Okay. So that's about the same, I would say. I think that's about Because yeah. I, I got these little stubby legs, you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. You got to take two steps for every one of mine. Maybe three. So. Maybe three. Yeah. You got really short legs. I got long legs. Like I think my legs are longer and my torso is short, but my legs are long, maybe. Uh, I'm the opposite. Opposite. Uh, long torso, short legs. But I guess your long legs come in handy. Yeah, you're... yeah, they're good for, for kicking people with and stuff. So <laughs> I don't know what I don't know what benefits a long torso would have, but the long legs are useful. Well, maybe a long torso, you're able to protect your, your rib cage more. Well, I feel like it would be a bigger target, a longer torso. Mm. Yeah, that's true. I mean, long arms, that's obvious. Long yeah. torso, I don't know. Yeah. All I know is a long torso is pretty sexy. True, true. Supermodels generally got the... Well, they got long everything, don't they? Yeah, they long. got long everything. Yeah. yeah. Those bitches. Yeah. <laughs> so you're going to uh, watch some videos? Yeah, I'll check out some angry yoga. <laughs> some angry yoga? Yeah, I'll send you some links for that. Um, All right, perfect. It could help with your, your injuries. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and maybe hopefully the next time we talk, you're a little bit more funny. Oh, yeah, I'll do my best. I'll look up some some jokes and stuff. And put together a little routine. Yeah. Well, you know what? Maybe I'll drive up to Huntsville and shoot some shit with you. Oh, there we go. I get the the juices flowing. Yeah. Yeah, and then we can go for a run. Get that bear spray. We got a knife. Fucking jujitsu some fucking bears. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think the two of us too. Two on one. Two yeah. on one pair. You know, my 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 short little ass can get underneath. Yeah. You hit them low, I hit them high. Or I just trip you and try and run away. But we'll figure it out when we get there. Yo, that's, uh, <laughs> you know, you don't leave a man behind, okay? Okay, all right. <laughs> Oh no, you're in the you you you're you're a fighter. It's all you're solo. Right? You're just gonna leave me on my own with the bear. Yeah, well apparently we run the same speed, so we'll see. We'll see who who outruns who, motherfucker. All right. Well, I feel like a a black bear I could do okay. Brown bears, like grizzly bears, they're oh. no grizzly bears, you're done. You don't yeah. there's nothing you can do. You're done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. brown bear maybe I suplex it or something break its neck maybe so many possibilities so many possibilities yeah yeah now that you got me thinking about it I'm like 98% sure I could kill a bear with my bare hands oh so I went on this run when I was in Huntsville the hills are crazy oh fucking love the hills and um, so the whole time I'm basically having this anxiety attack, um, just looking out for bears. Because I usually listen to a podcast when I'm running. Yeah. I'm trying, I'm trying to calm myself and just be like, oh, there's no bears around Fallon. Just listen to the podcast and run. And I'm running. There's this guy in front of me with his dog, a German Shepherd, and his German Shepherd turns around, and the guy doesn't see his dog. Oh, this dog was coming after me because he saw me running towards them like hey buddy your dog your fucking dog is after me so meanwhile i'm terrified of getting eaten by bears but in reality i almost got killed by a german shepherd and that yeah. is my huntsville story yeah yeah i think dogs and cars are probably a bigger far bigger threat than a, than a bear yeah especially with those windy turns yeah yeah yeah, people don't, I don't know, they don't don't seem to care much. They drive awfully close. But I went for a jog with my son, Cor or Griffin, in the stroller. If you take a stroller, people veer all the way across the road. So if it's just me running, they'll drive right beside me. But with the oh, stroller, yeah. they'll go way yeah, around. And you right the fuck over. Yeah, they don't give a shit about me. No, that, that's how I am with cyclists. That's how I am <laughs> with cyclists in Toronto. Yeah. Yeah, they're pretty yeah, okay. annoying. As a runner, they're annoying, and as a driver, they're annoying. Yeah, I never, I don't, I don't drive much in Toronto, so I haven't had to, had to deal with it yet. But I ride my bike a bit here in in Hamilton, and yeah, I don't think they care much about about me either. But I'm a good cyclist. I used to stay as far off the road. You, you you follow the rules and you wear your helmet? <laughs> That's for my safety though. It's not it's not impeding the drivers if I don't wear my helmet. Mm -mm, those are the laws though. Is it a law? Yeah. I thought it was like a guideline. No, I'm I'm pretty sure it's a law. Well I'm a rebel, I guess. They're breaking yeah. law. Yo, you are a non-smoking, non-weed smoking rebel. I know. Yeah. Badass motherfucker. Well, sir, on that note, I hope to see you fight soon after all this corona shit. And thanks for taking the time and chatting with me. Yeah, hopefully, yeah, no problem. Hopefully the next time... The next time we chat, you know, you're a little bit warmer, warmed yeah. up. Um, because I feel that there is funny in you. I feel I feel it through the computer. Yeah, yeah, I think it's in there somewhere. I think so. I think so. Look, I am getting old. Look at these wrinkles. Looking <laughs> at your wrinkles. Fucking thirty is gonna get me. Listen, I'm 33, okay? <laughs> well, you, you see, but you don't got these. 
Yeah, but you know, age age ain't nothing but a number, and I also don't get smashed in the face for a living. True. Very true. So that helps. Plus, I'm half black, and you know, black don't crack. Oh, that's right. That one rhymes. Yeah, I'm just all all white. I don't know. Don't have any. It's gonna age age horribly, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> But you have, you know what the best but you're a man, okay? Men men can age. Women love older men and you're gonna age if you allow yourself you can age to age gracefully, you know, and be handsome and distinguished, you'll be fine. Yeah, I guess. I'm losing my hair, but this yeah, rock. You don't worry about that. Yeah. Yeah. As long as I don't get the grays. Oh, the grays are the best. Yeah, I guess like a touch of gray, a dusting, a dusting of gray. Yeah, a dust, right? a dust of gray is is the best. Mm-hmm. Yeah, not the whole thing. No, then you're just like grandpa. Yeah, then you're done. Then you're 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 shriveled up. Yeah. Ooh, those nuts are grapes. <laughs> I guess don't have that problem yet. So that's good. <laughs> we'll cross that bridge when we get there. <laughs> You'll probably have to check down there soon if you have any grays. Yeah, I'll wait till I'm thirty. I know. Yeah. See how that goes for you. I'll grow it out. See if any grays come in. Grow well, your bush. Yeah. Yeah. Get that old man bush going. <laughs> Yeah, I love a good man bush. You do? I do, you know? It's um it's like the seventies. Yeah, I guess I've I don't know if I've ever talked to anyone that liked a lot of bush, but Yeah, I like hair on a man. You know, well, I have a lot of that, like, arm hair. you know men that wax and stuff? That's just weird. I don't personally know any, but I've I've heard they're out there. Wow. Like be proud of your hair. Yeah, well see mine I my I got a lot of arm hair, but then it stops. Okay. Well I that's what I usually does. It stops at some point. And then it cuts off there, disappears. Yeah, yeah I have the same problem with my calf. Just have with your hair. calf? Yeah. It's not on my mm. whole thing. It's my calf. Yeah, I don't know. People always make fun of my arm hair because it stops. Really? But it's not what arm hair does? Is this supposed I don't know. to I thought be to your back? I guess. Like, where I don't does know. it stop? Mine stops like right on my bicep, I guess. Yeah, that's normal. Yeah. There we go. You I'll let the haters know. No, you let those fucking haters know that you're normal. <laughs> yeah. I can't handle pretty boys. Yeah, you know those pretty boys that um you know they always gotta be GQ. Yeah, and they got the jawline and yeah. butt chin and stuff. They look so sexy. Yeah. Those are the ones that wax themselves. Yes. Those are the ones. Kyle, those are the ones. And you know what they're called? I don't. Queefs. Queefs, okay. Pussy queefs. That's a new one for me. I've heard the term, just never. You know what? So this is my theory. A pussy queef, the definition for a pussy queef is someone who has no substance. So a pussy queef, it's like a fart, but it's not coming out of the ass. You see, the ass is, that's where the gas comes from. So it's just an empty, empty fart, I guess. (laughs) (laughs) 
Okay. But can you see how that relates? I'm I'm following a little bit. I don't I don't know if I'm going to add it to my vocabulary, but uh, I see where you're coming from. Yeah, because there's no substance in a queef. There's no substance in a pretty boy. Hence, pussy. And do you need to throw pussy in there every time, or can you just go with queef? Because this isn't queef. There's only one type of queef, right? There's a multiple. Are you queef. saying it's redundant? Are you I saying think it's redundant? So. I've never heard of it. Non sometimes things need to be emphasized. Okay. And the, the, the pussy part and of it. In this case, in this case, a queef is just not enough. You must say pussy queef. Alrighty, we're going out of my normal comfort zone, but I'll throw it out there, see what happens. Yeah, try it. Test it out. You know, it could grow on you. Pussy queef. I would suggest just start with the queef. For you, the pussy doesn't sound right coming out of your mouth. Just say queef. Huh. Queef. Queef. How does it feel? Queef. Queef. Like, I think I'm finding it, maybe. I think so. It suits you. It does. It does. Okay. It's natural. Queef. Yeah, see? Look at that. All right. I'll throw it at a couple of people today and see what happens. Yeah. Let me know how it goes. Gauge the reactions. Okay. Signing off once again. Sir. I'm a, I'm a fat boss. I'm a fat boss. I'm a, I'm a fat boss.